Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Real Estate Uncensored. I am doing the intro because the Johnson face uh, has a uh, challenging Wi-Fi connection. And yes, if any of you guys heard me talking to myself right before I went on, because the preview <laughs> for everything um, on Facebook on Blue Jeans completely different and uh, did not know what to do with it as soon as I saw it. Uh, but guys, we are, we are back. We are back for another edition. And, you know, we got one of our, our, our reoccurring, just amazing guests, Nick Sackis. He's going to talk about everything cyber and everything to expect in 2018. But, you know, before we get to Nick, you know, Matt, if you can hear us, I, I, and I, I got to say, man, we got the greatest fucking guests on planet Earth, dude. I mean, and the guy, I, I got Drew, dude. He wrote me a card saying thank you for my coaching time. You know, I had I had an opportunity to to talk with a couple other folks. I talked to a guy named Jay. Uh, really awesome to talk to him out of out of um, out of Chicago area, and uh, you know, no Boston, 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 not Chicago. But I mean, he's a second generation real estate agent, and just the the time that I get hanging out with our listeners and our you know, followers and everything else. You guys are just amazing human beings. And I, we are so, like I said, incredibly blessed to have you. Um, and today's show, um, we're going to, re- we're going to reveal, uh, some stuff that, uh, may scare the shit out of you. And, you know, Nick and I were debating if we should do this or should not, but I said, you know, it's not always rain, rainbows, sherbet, Wait. and unicorns over here. So yes, we're going to scare Greg, the sherbet. You're, you're, you're going to, Greg's going to stand up on the show. Is that what's going to happen? <laughs> I will stand up. I will. I, I, slim slim, slim Shady is going to stand up. The I'm emperor's wearing Shady. no pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I actually, I actually am wearing pants. Thank God. All right. Well, speaking of great guests, I think you meant we have a great audience, Greg, which I agree. No, we do have a great audience, by the way, which, which they are awesome and epic and, and legendary. Um, but we do have a phenomenal guest. One of our favorite people is back. Nick Sackis is here. Star uh, of screen and that. stage. You missed that. I, I, I already <laughs> gave him the intro. What do you mean? I'll Can't take two intro. intros. Come I've been on. here Keep the whole coming. time. I know what I know. Keep what telling me how did. wonderful I am. Yeah. That's fine. Keep, uh, yeah. We just we just want to we just want to focus on Nick's ego. we want to focus on Nick's hat. That, that's what we're, we're going to spend the next fifty nine and a half minutes talking about Nick's hat. All right. Exactly. Anyway, it should Nick, be green for those of you for those of you who may have missed um, one of your previous episodes. Give us kind of the primer where you're at and why you're talking about marketing on the show with us today. What, what's your what's your your digital marketing hobby? Okay, so uh, in uh, Tampa, Florida, over here at Keller Williams, and uh, I do have a team uh, with my mom. Uh, she's been in the business for 25 years, and interestingly enough, when I came onto the team about four years ago, she said, well, uh, son, it's you know nice to have you on the team, but what the hell are you going to do for me? Uh, you know, she already had an established business, already had something that was going on pretty well, so uh, I basically said, well, I'm going to bring us into the 21st century into uh, some marketing and some online presence. And it's something that I've been studying for probably five to eight years before I jumped in full time in real estate. I was really studying what the big teams in the market were doing. And uh, it's kind of evolved into something now where I actually do have a marketing company on the side, along with real estate, where I help other realtors uh, with their branding, with their marketing, understanding what's going on in 2017 and beyond with real estate, with small business marketing, how to get your name and your brand out there and how to not have to spend a million dollars a month doing it, right? So that's kind of my short. I think you're, uh, can't hear you, Greg. You bought your. Damn it, Johnson. There you, you go. Mute you're me. back on. Um, but uh, you know back what? On. I want to spend a million dollars, Nick. I want to spend a million dollars. I don't want to take any I, profits. So if I, I can't will spend take a million bucks, dollars from you. Yes. No, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take off my hat and you can place it right in my hat. Yeah. Okay. So the reason I'm wearing this festive hat and the reason uh, we we were talking earlier about something that, that I want to bring to the attention of everybody and not to be Mr. Doom and Gloom, but, you know, everybody was shopping the past couple of days, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, for the most part, everybody was just going crazy with online shopping and for a good reason. And the one thing I want to mention is since I do study what's going on in the marketplace, not just with real estate marketing, but with big brands to correlate, to see what the big boys are doing and then funnel that into how we can utilize what they're doing for our small businesses. Um, But one thing I'd like to really mention is Amazon absolutely annihilated Black Friday, Cyber Monday and beyond. Um, And and when I say Amazon annihilated it, it wasn't even close. They literally 55% 
of every online transaction that happened from Black Friday until today went through Amazon. And I want to pause for dramatic effect. 55%. Hang on. Maybe Greg can mute himself again and we'll get another, <laughs> get another dramatic pause. 55% uh, of hold every on. transaction. <clears throat> <laughs> and and the reason why I bring that up, and, and out of the 55%, uh, 54%, they were up on mobile. So I, I like to ask the audience, how many of you guys, A, number one, bought something from Amazon, and number two, shopped on your mobile device? And, and why is that important to us, right? Um, a lot of times we sit behind our desk and we have these beautiful websites that we're typing on our keyboard and looking really nice. But folks, we live in a mobile world. 100%, no ifs, ands, or buts. If someone is comfortable enough to shop for hundreds of dollars online with their phone, it's not going to be long to where they're shopping for $100,000 and $200,000 and $300,000 with a house. Okay. That technology, it's not available. It's not here yet. Um, but I just want you guys to be aware of what's going on in the big world and the big marketplace. Not that real estate's not a big business, but for one company to take 55% of all transactions, um, I, I told Greg before, like everybody's saying that we need to be, everyone's all up in arms about Zillow and what Zillow is doing for real estate. Uh, we need to keep an eye on what Amazon's doing because uh, between 55% of all online transactions, they've already rolled out the referral network, which real estate is not a part of yet. Um, they're doing it for other small business owners. They have 70 million subscribers for Prime. Wow. 70 million people are subscribed to Amazon Prime, which how many emails would it take for those 70 million people to become aware of Amazon possibly having a listing package, possibly having some sort of, you know, agreement to where, hey, this is now we're in the real estate game. So I'm not doom and gloom. I'm wearing the hat to let you guys know that a lot of transactions, a lot of money was just passed through Amazon and everybody's all up war about Zillow. But uh, we, we definitely live in an Amazon world, so we need to pay attention to what they're doing. There's been a lot of talk about Amazon and or Zillow, like you said, just bam, just in the game. And people have been worried about Amazon, not Amazon, about Zillow taking us over, eliminating, eliminating the agents. I think there is potentially relevance to that, but I don't think agents will go away. I think they could move sure. into more of a salary position uh, with a bonus structure or something like that, like a typical corporation, uh, which some, for some agents, let's face it, you guys, it might be a bonus for you. <laughs> um, but I mean, for, for, for a lot of us, when we get into this business for you know, autonomy, we get into it for freedom. We get into it, you know, for a lot, you know, for a you know, better lifestyle without having bosses. And I don't know how long that's going to be here, Nick. I mean, and you're right. I think the writing might be on the wall with this. If you were a betting man in Vegas, would you go on black or red? Would you go sooner or later, you know, for this to really come down the pipe? Um, the, the interesting part is I, I posted in my group, a, an interview from 60 minutes from 1999. And you think about 1999 for us, for me, um, that was my first year. I was a freshman in high school. Okay. It might've been for you guys a little bit. Freshman uh, in high school, freshman in high school, 1999. Fuck, okay. Dude, I was in so, college. So check this out though, right? <laughs> you watch this video from 1999 and people, the whole world, it's, it's a completely different world. It might as well have been a video from 1960. And the reason I say that is because they're interviewing Jeff Bezos from 1999. And, and they're talking about how Amazon is selling books. And we all forget Amazon came out of the gate just selling books. That's all they yeah. did was books and music. And they had comparisons between Barnes & Noble and Borders and all these things that were going on. Barnes & Noble and Borders saying no one's going to buy books online. Everybody wants to touch and feel them. And he's laughing all the way to the bank in 1999. But the funny part is the guy who did the interview, I don't remember what his name was. And then the people that they were interviewing, it was the internet. It, it was like this foreign thing. The way they were talking about the internet was like the way that we would probably be talking about virtual reality right now. Like really? we know it's kind of there. We know it's a thing. It's not a thing yet, but that was 1999. And you, to think in, in 18 years, 20 years, our entire world has shifted our, our entire, everything that we do is so much different from, and that was 20 years ago, what's going to happen from now until 2040? Okay. And mm -hmm. if, if, if it takes the same leap that it did from 1999 till 2040, I don't know where it's going. Um, or I know where it's going, but I don't know where, what it's going to end up. All I'm saying is uh, things are happening way faster than even a lot of us are predicting or thinking. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, I agree. It's... But I don't think I, I I don't think that technology is the main thing that prevents us from doing all this cool stuff and from making inroads in real estate. Uh, I mean, think about uh, the fact that there's already companies out there that can make uh, essentially an instant offer, right, for your home. Sure. But it's but it's not a retail offer; it's a wholesale offer, right? Now you now we know from from being in the business how hard it is to get a seller to accept a retail offer from a buyer, right? Imagine how difficult it is to get them to accept a wholesale offer, right, for 23% yeah. below. You know well, what I'm saying? that really depends on the want, need, or desire of that buyer, of that seller. I mean, if they're in a situation where they got to go, it's going to be the same difference of, of just taking an offer. I mean, I was listening to Tom Ferry do one of his shows today when I was doing some calls, and he made a great point. I mean – before we had to go into a retail store, aka work with a re- real estate agent, right, to, to get a product, get a pair of jeans, to get a shirt or buy a car, right? Do Tom went on to went on, went on leased a Tesla, hundred thousand plus dollar car, took him less than ten minutes to fill out a few questions. He walked in, filled out a few papers, less than twenty minutes he was out the door with keys in hand because it was such a simplified process online. I mean why why wouldn't it transfer over sure. I, that's the scary part well here's the thing well, so because, my point because, to all because this. you're not buying a house you're not buying a house from tesla if you're buying a house from a manufacturer where they can make it a simple process and they it's priced according to something that's actually based in the real world imagine if you were trying to buy a tesla from someone that owned it for two years thought it was worth mysteriously more than you can buy a new one for <laughs> because they put a real nice porch on it or they've had to re they've had to put new tires on it therefore it's worth ten thousand dollars more than a new tesla you know like if that was the market like for a car um you know what i'm saying is that i think that there's there's a lot that has to do in real estate with the psychological factors of bringing the buyer and seller together that sure. they're they're more we're more stopped by the psychology of getting them to meet in the middle on a price and the complexity of the process because of all the stuff that's involved in pulling off a real estate transaction than we are the technology. The technology to pass money back and forth in exchange for a good or a service, like we already have that. That's not that's not what's preventing us from doing real estate deals online or through Zillow or through Amazon or anything like that. So it'd be interesting to see whether something comes along that can simplify the process so much or if maybe something something comes along that makes the process so seamless that like Greg was talking about, like when you get into the situation, like you can afford to wait until you absolutely have to move. And then at that point you just pull the trigger and go, okay, great. Just, you know, and so, and so let's say instead of 7% going to the agent, you just sell it for seven to 10% less than what you might get on retail, but you sell it like that to Amazon and, or something like Amazon. And then they turn around and sell it on the open market. So that, that I can totally see that happening. So, yeah, so here's I, my here's my point to all this, right? And it's it's become so abundantly clear to me for for my own benefit, for my own and what I'm talking about in my group to everybody that know any realtor, is that the only way to really survive this technology just influx of all this stuff that's going on, it goes back to the very basic root of your guys' message, my message, is surround your database with as much knowledge and as much love and care as you possibly can because at the end of the day the reason the only reason technology will win is if technology does a better job of explaining the real estate process than we do yeah but i think it will actually i think it will get to that point i mean gary v made a good point a number of years ago he was doing an interview and he said you guys think you're your kid you're, you're fucked with your kids now on social media you're gonna wish social media was around when virtual reality takes full hold of, of our day-to-day lives People sure. will get lost out into that, and I think the process will be explained very easily in there because there will be, you know, instructional videos. There'll be Q and A's, FAQs. There'll be all kinds of different things that people can, you know, go into. Not need a real estate agent. Go off of something that a brokerage or agent has created, you know, already in advance, where everything can be explained. So that if they're up at two o'clock in the morning and they have taken a virtual re- walk through of the property. You know, they, they woke up their wife, put the mask on her. She walked through it. They both <laughs> love it at 4.30 in the morning. They've watched some videos together. All of a sudden, they pick up the phone and say, Nick, we want one, two, three Main Street. We right. want to buy this thing. We've already submitted our credit application to you. We've already submitted all of our documents to you. Let's make the deal. 
And at that point, I mean, who knows where, I mean, we have DocuSign, that wasn't around five, six years ago. I mean, that thing radically changed our reality in this industry. You know, I mean, it, it is, things are changing at a very high rate of speed. And what was it, between 1900 and 2012, um, the, the, the technological advances uh, reached a certain point, but from, and then every other year or every two years or something like that, they, they double or triple the, the total amount from 1900 to 2012. Is are those numbers right, Nick? I think I think I have my years right on that. All I know is that um, a ten-year-old—if you have a ten-year-old child—they've never experienced going to the library to read a book to do a report. Oh God! I mean, that's huge. That like let's let's talk about like just the the basic function of the kids now grew up with Google and YouTube. Like we didn't we didn't have that growing up. So what are the what is their world going to look like? In 10, 15 years, what, what do you got? <laughs> so, can anybody tell me what this is? <laughs> Anyone know what this yeah. is? Uh, an envelope opener. Right. I showed yeah. this to Midori, one of my past team members, 25 at the time. Literally had no clue what that was. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, if she doesn't know what a letter opener is, and when you show people, you know, phone booths, and they they literally scratch their head, like, what, what do you what do? You do? Where's the, where are the cell phones? I mean, my little yeah. niece, May May, May, well, May May, we call her May, her name is real May Lee. My parents just got a big old new television. Without a joke, she walked up to the TV when it was on, touched the screen, and went swipe, and she <laughs> couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. <laughs> why it wasn't swiping, yeah. <laughs> why it wasn't swiping, so yeah. It's going to be a trip. There was a, uh, a cartoon a number of years ago, um, and it talked about this fact about how everybody went into the digital world. They created avatars, and basically, basically they became, you know, fat and lazy, and they didn't move off their little, you know, couches that they laid on, and their avatars were out in the world and and everything else. I mean, maybe that is where we're going in 20 years, and there's really nothing saying that we won't be there unless North Korea, you know, drops a nuke on us, and then we're all fucked. But yeah. I I just think that now more than ever it's it's very apparent that you know being in the in the places where your customers are being on Facebook being on Instagram being on YouTube with messages letting people know what you're doing how the business works and just being education and informational uh is is so crucial now because not documenting your journey in 2017 is probably one of the biggest mistakes uh because people need to know what's going on and what you're doing and if if you can't you know, show people that you're in the business, in the world, uh, and connecting it with the digital world. It's 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 going to be really tough to survive in in 10 years, I think. So, so let's 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 dovetail off that. Where would where would you what would be the first thing for people to start? You know, where would they start this process if they haven't done it already? How would they start getting into the digital realm? It, you know, honestly, I, I try to ask people. I just did this in my group too. Of what is your favorite platform? Because there's there's a lot of people on every single platform. So if you are a female 45 to 55 and you like, you know, Pinterest, then maybe you should, if you understand Pinterest, then maybe you should write some blog posts and focus on Pinterest, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you like Facebook, if you grew up on Facebook and that's kind of your thing, focus on Facebook. If you like Instagram, um, if you're a millennial, you know, I've just throwing out some general terms here, but a lot of people just like Instagram because they don't like the the sidebars or any of that stuff. They like it to be very visual. Um, but I was telling Greg in the beginning of, of this show, one way to kind of look at it and, and my, from my perspective, how I focus on things is Facebook is my forward facing platform. That is my finished product, if you will. So I, I like to put anything that's on Facebook from an ad to any post or anything as that's my production, okay? Anything that's behind the scenes or what I want to document of my my journey, the grungy, the the more cell phone kind of stuff, that's going to be your Instagram. That's what people expect on Instagram, your Instagram stories and, and all that good stuff. So if you have to correlate, don't necessarily think, um, you know, you have to have high quality stuff on Instagram so you don't. So if you want to just start with your phone – then maybe Instagram is the place for you because that's what's expected on that platform. If you went into Instagram stories with a professional lighting and camera, people wouldn't respond to you, but they, they're starting to expect that on Facebook. We talked about Facebook Watch um, coming to be a huge platform. Uh, they're starting to up. Oh, go ahead. You got something? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, when you asked for my favorite platform, I was going to say Pornhub, but I realized then, no, you, we're talking about social media. Um, but Matt's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, so man. This, this is oh, this that, is something that, that, that is, this is this thanks is something for rummaging around in your desk. To, uh, hold on. 
This is something that we're talking about, like cell phone stuff. This is a $12 uh, light that uh, my friend Stevie told me about. You press it on, instantly you get the nice ring of light that you guys what? can shoot. Dude, it's super cool, man. It's super rechargeable. Cool. Rechargeable, comes with a little pink baggie, which is very masculine. Um, but I mean, it's, it's you guys can start shooting in, in multiple different locations with very cheap, inexpensive equipment now. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah, we if you, if you want to do that. If if organic is your thing, if you have no money, so let's let's back it up. If you have no money, you don't want to spend money on ads. I, I would advise you to go on Instagram. Instagram is still the best place for organic reach um, and mm. any kind of organic following. For whatever reason, um, you know, we talked about this before. Uh, I do have a product where I help people get more likes and followers on their business page, but it doesn't. It's not going to give you more engagement. It's just going to give you more people to engage with, right? Um, mm. Facebook is pay to play now. It's it's very simple. You you have to um, pay them in order to get in front of eyeballs. Where Instagram, you can get a huge following, and that's why I put more focus on Facebook. My following on Instagram is very low, but make no mistake, in 2018, I'm going to put a huge focus on getting that organic following and that reach inside Instagram. And I think that's a good place to start if uh, if you don't have much funds. You grow. I mean, I let's be honest. God damn it! Don't fucking mute me. You know, we, you know, your, this is your mic. Your microphone is, 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 you know, like your, well, it's, it is it's, what it is. a lot of background noise. So well, there's nothing. So I'm so this is what I'm saying. is So when it comes down to, you know, Instagram, I've desperately tried to be a better Instagrammer. I suck. I mean, how, how can you get better? I mean, who can you go watch? What's your, my inspiration? Like who, who do I watch? Honestly, is Gary V. It's ridiculous. Cause Everybody wants to be like Gary Vee, but the the amount of content that he has and, and what he produces is just, it's mind boggling. But at the same time, you know, you don't have a, a, a hundred person crew uh, to be able to create all exactly. this stuff. But what's interesting, and, and like I said, so I've, when you follow people or other br big brands or businesses, you see what they're doing. So if you can just it, don't get overwhelmed with what they're doing, but just look at how they're doing it. And so in Instagram stories, a, a big feature that just happened within the past three months is the ability to run an ad in Instagram stories and people are able to swipe up to see exactly and go to your link and go off of Instagram where that wasn't even an option before. So as a paid off advertiser, huh. what's that? Your microphone's muted again. Yeah, I know. It, it, it wasn't tech issues today, but you can go off Insta now? Yeah, so as a page advertiser, mm. as, a, as an actual advertiser, if you advertise in Instagram stories, it's it's a full um, full experience, so full screen experience, right? And then when the customer sees, it's actually set up in three different sections. So you can have a lot of stuff going on. It could be really cool. You can have a banner on top, a video playing on the bottom. And then on the very bottom is the third section. You can tell people swipe up for more information. So before where you would get very little engage, you would get engagement, but you wouldn't get people off of Instagram. Now it's infinitely easier to run an ad on Instagram and get that engagement and get people to hop off of Instagram. So that's a big hmm. deal. Um, but that, just doing, huge. yeah, just doing stories in general is huge because there's a lot of people that go on Instagram and just watch stories and don't even really necessarily post stuff. Yeah, it was, um, my friend here, uh, Sarah Johnson, guys, if you guys can see this, go to Instagram and you can find her. And it says Adventures in Real Estate um, YC. She's like 13, 14,000 followers on Instagram because she's herself and she's quirky. It doesn't hurt that she's a hot blonde, but she's just herself and people bond with being her. Um, and I think that's where I have a hard time, Nick. Maybe it's us guys that may have a harder time being able to get those true followers. And I was told sure. just to go like and follow everybody and everything. But then you get... Sure just a bunch of bullshit out there that, that does nothing for you when it comes to actual business growth. Yeah. So like just there's, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of bots on Instagram where you'll post something. The The more you start getting into the, the network, you'll see as soon as you post something, you'll get a response from somebody in half a second. Like, no, that's not real. Like there's people that just go out there and have mm -hmm. the same thing to try to get that, that BS reach. Uh, that's not real, but yeah, going into Instagram and DMing people, businesses, I actually, um, I just did a podcast earlier today. My local podcast is a new grocery store in town. That was, I didn't know that grocery store. I didn't know anybody there. I didn't even walk into the grocery store. It was a DM. I said, Hey, 
I just saw your store open. I have this local podcast. I would love to be able to interview somebody from your network or from your, um, you know, headquarters Mm -hmm. as a new store in town. It took two weeks to set it up, but I got them on my show. Like that's awesome. That wouldn't have been available to me. Their headquarters is in North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of stuff isn't available 10 years ago, but it's available now. So it, it's huge. There, there's the impact that you can have and, and the ability to reach people is, is absolutely huge. So Facebook came out with something new that you can probably use for Insta. Well, you guys are looking here. It's called facebook.com uh, forward slash local. Yeah. Um, and as soon as this thing pulls up for all you guys that are watching, you can go and you can go take a look at like restaurants, bars, events, whatever else you want to do. And you can do by city or zip code or whatever else. And so you guys could go out and you could start going to different bars and restaurants, talking to the general manager, the owners, doing a quick little interview with them. Um, I've talked about, Nick, have you experienced, have you played with, um, uh, uh, coop out.com? Yeah. Yeah. I have coop outs really pretty cool. I have, I've been paying for it for about eight months. I haven't used it once. Yeah. <laughs> I got to start using that thing. I, when I first launched about? my, yeah. When I first launched my podcast, uh, last year, So I I launched a podcast. I did five episodes. Then I switched to Keller Williams, dropped the whole podcast, didn't do anything for eight or nine months. Then I relaunched it as a Facebook Live. But I signed up with Coop Out back then. And as my, you know, not knowing about a podcast, not knowing how to do it, that was my phone call to uh, local business owners just saying, hey, I'm going to create a coupon for you. And I'm going to create a commercial for you. So that was like, my pitch, my entry into the door. Like, let's collaborate together. Unless you're already doing something, let's create this coupon. It'll be branded Sackus Group. I'll have it nice and pretty. You could put it on your Facebook page and all that stuff. And it's still live on my uh, on my Facebook page. But I ended up, I dropped. I haven't contacted him back again. But it is a very powerful, super easy to use, super inexpensive, um, and it works. I mean, people were going in and and redeeming those coupons. Really. Yeah, yeah I, I've got to get out there and I start. I got to do it because I'm doing a, a networking event tonight with uh, my my boys over at Rockstar Connect uh, for my networking event. And you know, I I suck. It's my fault, bad Greg. But I was supposed <laughs> to go out to all the local cities and your local businesses and shops and everything around my event, create a coop out, spend some time, get the invitations, build the rapport. Um, and I think that's something another way you can get out and get a, generate some now business, but you can also do it using the technology side that we're talking about so heavily sure. in the show. And I, all of you guys who are watching Facebook, I put the link for Coop Out into the into the chat log. It's just coopout.com for all your iTunes and Stitcher listeners. Yeah, very cool. And business networking is nothing new, but in in the world that we live in today, if you can provide value to another business owner, because we're all marketing experts, right? That's what we do. We mm-hmm. market homes for sale. So if you can provide, uh, yeah, we tell ourselves <laughs> that, but it's true. Uh, believe it or not, I mean, even there's a lot of small business owners that are a lot worse shape than we are uh, as as regular realtors. I would I would say that there's a lot of realtors that are much more advanced than you know Joe's Pizza Shack or whatever that has no clue that's got his 12 year old daughter posting stuff on it for him because he has no freaking clue and doesn't care. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's the or, sad part. Yeah, or she. I'm not saying Joe's got to be just a dude, but there's pizza ladies too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> not to be sexist I want everybody to be you know a pizza person <laughs> that that is awesome so we're, so we're talking about creating content as a new way to do a lot of marketing uh, you and i talked about some stuff that i really want to jump into you know insta snap just came out with a really big update today They're completely changing their platform all around content insta doing the same thing you told me about a facebook was it space facebook show right facebook watch so uh, similar. So you see how Facebook is positioning themselves. You mentioned Facebook local, the app, right? They're directly going against Yelp. So that's, that's what they're doing with that app, right? Facebook watch, they're directly going against YouTube. And the interesting part of watch is the reason why I think watch is going to be like the next big thing is because it's connecting the community of Facebook with what everybody already loves, which is online videos. Right. So people love YouTube. People love Netflix. And and the thing that the problem with YouTube is it doesn't necessarily give you that community feel like Facebook. It, it just it doesn't. There's a lot of trolls on there. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily give you the platform jump. What what's going to happen with Facebook Watch is just like you have a business page now and a personal page, you'll be able to have what's called a show page. OK, 
and only it's by invite only right now. I just made an application for mine. I don't know if I'm going to get it. They're very vague on the specifications on who they're approving right now, but essentially you'll have a show page and that's where you upload all your videos. You have all your episodes and everything. But what's cool is that show page will be connected with a Facebook group. And I, I mentioned before that Instagram is the place to be for organic reach and organic following. But inside Facebook, Facebook groups is where it's at for any kind of communication back and forth with your people. So like, Greg, you guys have a group. I have my own group, right? Um, it's so much different inside of a group than on a regular Facebook page where you're just talking at people and telling people, this is what I'm doing. This is how, you know, Greg McDaniel sells real estate. This is how Nick Saka sells real estate. When you get in a group function and people can communicate back and forth, it changes the whole atmosphere and everything. So when you have that Netflix type, YouTube type channel where you can engage with your audience one-on-one -on -one during the show, right? And then have that after party, if you will, inside the group. It's, it's huge. It's going to be absolutely huge. The amount of, of following and goodwill and everything you're going to be able to create is, I, I don't even know how big it can be, but I know that it's going to be something that I want to be one of the first to be a part of um, because I know it's just going to be something that's absolutely, that's where everybody's going to be at. Yeah, I could not agree with you more on that one. Um, about a year, year and a half ago, my cousin is, is still dating this guy, and he was a part of a company called Smile Time, and very similar to Facebook Watch, what you were explaining right there, because you could come on, you could do a pre-show, you know, you could take questions live during the show, and then have a post after party with all the people continuing, you know, the Q&A or interacting yeah. or whatever else. So, I, I mean, when Matt and I first saw that, we about came out of our skin because we're so excited about it. And I'm mm -hmm. like you, man. I want to be a first adopter of Facebook Watch. I, I think that that's, it's just going to be something that's going to be incredibly interesting. I've heard rumors about this for a long period of time, that Facebook is going to have their own shows. And it would be basically they could put it up on, essentially put it up into Netflix, you know, and you could have your own show. Well, it'll be exclusive. Yeah, they'll have exclusives yeah. just like Netflix has. You see mm -hmm. now there's a there's great shows on Netflix that would never be allowed on cable TV, right? But it's not quite like the HBO filth. Uh, not that HBO is super filthy. It's not Pornhub or anything, but <laughs> it's not quite the HBO, but it's definitely more risque than like your cable television. But that's like middle America. That's what people are right now, right? It's it's just that little bit nudge past ABC, NBC, but not quite, you know, HBO. Well, Matt Lauer did get fired for inappropriate behavior, so we don't know what yeah. ABC has been up yeah. to, okay? <laughs> Those dirty birds over there. That might be its own show right there. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> male, male predators yeah. you know, in the workforce. Yeah. No, that, that's just, that, that is an interesting place to go with this is, is where the shows are going to go. So, okay, let's, 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 let's break this down. Let's back this up a little bit. Let's say someone's going, oh, shit, this is the first time I've seen Nick, the first time I've seen Greg, first time I've been on this, you know, on this, on this show. What the fuck are they talking about? Well, if you create content versus pushing an ad, so all of you guys that are watching this, this is the business card, right? Um, yes, I'm the one that looks like a 12-year-old. I was taken 18 years ago. But, I mean, if, if that was a stale, stagnant ad or, 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 you know, for our team, now it's going into live, in color, you know, content development where you can actually bring you know a, a large amount of value to the people that are watching you on a consistent basis. Therefore, they build the trust, they build the rapport with you. I mean, I talked to a lot of the people that watch the show, Nick, and when I talk to them, they're like, "Dude, I've been binge watching you for the last 15 hours." I'm like, "Holy shit, I don't even listen to myself for 15 hours." Yeah. Um, but they, but they're like, "Dude, I feel like I know you." Because sure. I, 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 I've been listening and watching you, and I think your customer base, your buyers, your sellers, like you said, you got to circle the wagons around your SOI. Because if they can feel like they actually know you, like they can be, they go on your, on your, on your vacations with you, they're celebrating your daughter's fifth birthday party. You know, you and your wife go off for an anniversary to Napa before it burned, um, and, and for the weekend, you take them shots of the dinner you guys are having. I mean. But also educating people about what's going on around your area. I mean, is all of that going to be part of what you're talking about, or are we going to be only hyper specific, just real estate? I mean, what what do you what do you think? No, I th I think that's that's the problem that people are are having right now is what's too much or how much is too much, right? We we want to if if you've never dove into the content world, you always ask yourself inside like, what do I want to broadcast the world? And that's really a personal question because 
for me, honestly, if I wasn't in real estate, if I didn't have a marketing company, my Facebook page would be a picture of me and my family. And I'd probably be on there once a month. Like I'm an introvert. I have no, there's, there's nothing inside of me that feels like I need somebody else's approval to, to, to put myself out there. Right. I, I'm doing this for business. It's, it's, I'm very, you know, it, it's, it's not like I'm a social butterfly uh, or anything like that. And I think there's a lot more people like me who are introverts that just can't wrap their head around the business side of it, of why it's so important for business in terms of, I just don't want to put myself out there. And if you could just take that step and realize that, you know, how you communicate with someone in real life is how we need to, how people start expecting you to communicate online. Um, it, it's, that's just the way that we have to think about business in 2017 because nobody wants to hide behind the business card. Like you just put up, you can't be the stuffy, you know, just corporate business. People expect to be able to touch the CEO of Amazon and Walmart. Like they know who those people are. We just talked about that, Nick, no touching, not in the corporate (laughs) world. Bad Nick. (laughs) But who who would know who Jeff Bezos was 20 years ago? Like that wouldn't have happened. Like major CEOs and big wigs, like they were untouchable people. The regular consumer didn't know who those big shots were. Now it's commonplace. Like there's take the brand off and it's, it's who you are. It's what you do as a business. What drives you? What motivates you? Why do you get up and sell real estate? Yes, it's to make money, but I'm sure you love helping people find their dream home or get them the top dollar for their home. And if you can convey that online, people will just come to you. It's the attraction of, uh, of human beings. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, when I when I first started the podcast, I mean, I had my parents, I had people around me. If I said fuck, everyone ran for the hills, covering their ears, you know, praying to God nothing, you know, you know the you know there wasn't brimfire and you know stone falling from the sky to crush me. Now that I say fuck all the time, people come up to me like, dude, I love the cuss all the time, man, it makes you real. Yeah. And even my parents are like, you know, Greg, ding, we support you. I'm like. <laughs> What the hell? What the hell just happened? And it's that? because I owned my brand. I owned who I yeah. am, I, and I don't. And I, and I and I don't apologize for who I am. If you don't like me, fuck off. I'll yeah. work with someone else. If you don't like me, you don't want to join my team. You know that Matt and I are building. Fuck off. We'll join. We'll get someone else. But I'm true to me, and that's what resonates with the people that resonate with me. And you have to find that and be real to yourself. You can't. You can't be a fake version of you. People will smell that out, that out a mile away, and then you're going to do no good for yourself. Don't and don't I, try to be someone else. I think that's the hardest part too, though, is because when you're, you step into business and you want to please everybody, but at the end of the day, you're not going to please everybody. So if you could just realize that, you know, sifting through and dealing with the people you want to deal with that you jive with anyway is going to be much happier life, much better business in in general. Uh, But that just reminded me of Eddie Murphy raw, where he's like, he meets the foreigner and he's like, Eddie Murphy, fuck you, (laughs) Mr. Fuck you, man. (laughs) <laughs> it's totally true though and, and, and eddie runs with it and he you guys have yeah. you know pretty 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 healthy career of being who he is so let's talk about content tools you've gone over a couple of content tools on your your show so lumus 5 is one of them right lumen 5 so what yeah lumen what i've done is. actually inside my group uh real estate marketing rock stars ting, i'm gonna put a tm there in, in a few uh few months <laughs> ting. <laughs> but, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so inside of our group, I, I actually created something called the Real Estate Rockstar Vault. And what I'm doing, because I know that Lumen5 is a powerful tool to use, and I know I've told people about it, but at the end of the day, uh, you have to implement, right? So I, I've, I mentioned this tool. Nobody did anything with it except for a handful of people, like always. So I said, you know what? There's a need for really good real estate videos. We know that. But most realtors aren't going to actually create these videos. So uh, what I'm doing inside the group is anybody who's part of the group on Facebook, I have a drive folder that you have access to. And anytime I upload a video, so I'm creating real estate content videos, generic, and then uploading them into the file. So everybody inside the group will have access to buyer videos, seller videos. They're all generic. You can brand them however you want and use them for your own marketing. So that's what I've been doing with Lumen5 because it is very simple to use. But at the end of the day, um, realtors like stuff handed on a silver platter. So that's uh, that's what I try to help people with. Yeah, yes, I do. And guys, if you're not a part of his of his Facebook, you know, group, go 
check it out. Nick goes live in the seat that you see him right there. Every time the man opens his mouth, he's bringing something valuable to you. And he does all the legwork for you. You don't have to go out and find this stuff. He He's doing it for you. He's using it in his business. There's zero reason why you should not be paying attention to, to what he's putting out there. Nick, I also want to talk about, dude, how the fuck do you get people to find your, your group, man? What did you, what, what magic did you produce to, to cur- go have our page go from 2000 to 41,000 people in like, in the following us in two weeks. What is this? Oh, so yeah, we, I have a, a four day training. It's uh it's called instant social proof.com. If you want to go check it out. So like I told you before, the, your Facebook page is your front facing uh, store, if you will. When someone goes to your page, they want to see that you are liked. They want to see that you have followers. If you're going on a listing appointment and telling Mr. and Mrs. Seller that you are a Facebook expert, which most people do, a social media expert, and then they go on your page and they see you have 300 people that follow you, right? And then they go to Home Depot and see 2.5 million people or Lowe's or any other big brand. Um, there's a disconnect there. So what I did is I created a four day training called instant social proof. And, uh, it basically allows you in four days to get between 8,000 and 10,000 new followers to your business page. And at that point, the game is on, you, you can get the followers, but it's up to you at that point to engage with them and get people to actually communicate with you. But I will give you all the tools that you need necessary um, in order to get thousands of people to follow you on your Facebook business page. And uh, trust me, when you go on a seller's appointment and you say, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I can market your home to 10,000, 20,000, 40,000 people on my Facebook page. I am an expert in this market. Most of their agents only have 300 people to follow them. Um, it's a big deal. It's a big feather in your cap. It, 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 you know what? That's great in the theory. So I actually took your theory. Dude, uh, I, I, I love this. I took, I took okay. your theory. And I was I was meeting with another with a listing appointment, which, by the way, you guys, anyone you guys know which one this is, this is the two point three million dollar listing that I got referred to me. Now, I didn't get the listing, but for only one reason, because the the other agent actually pulled a rabbit out of their hat and actually brought a buyer in after they'd come out, you know, they took it off the market. But they loved me and they were going to list with me. So <laughs> and it was, said it was for me. But this is what I did, Nick. So I'm standing yeah. in the front yard with one of the brothers. There's three brothers and we're talking to two of them. And he said, well, what makes you stand out? And immediately your voice rang in my head. I'm like, <laughs> well, because, you know, I did the whole thing. Like most agents only have like two or 300 people. We have over 41,000 people that follow our Facebook. Yeah. And dude, he stopped in his tracks. He's like, that's impressive. I'm like, I know it is. <laughs> Going, Holy shit, he bought it. <laughs> it's but true. He, it's, uh, yeah. he stopped. Yeah, it's and absolutely he, true. Very, very cool stuff. And you were saying earlier that a lot of it in Facebook is now pay to play. And Mm -hmm. it is pay to play, but that $97 program you're talking about. And again, guys, I don't make any money on what Nick sells. This is not something that I'm pushing because I make any cash. This is something that he's doing just to weed out all the dipshits who just want to kick tires. But I mean, this, this system is insane. I mean, I thought he was full of crap. Did I not think you were crap, full of crap? Yeah, when you they first gave me him? three days. They said, well, here you go. Uh, we'll, we'll give you the weekend to try to prove yourself wrong. And uh, <laughs> over the weekend, you guys got six or 8,000, and then we let it run for a full month. And within that month, you spent exactly $510 bucks, or, five, or five, yeah, 500 yeah. something like that, um, and got 38, 40, 000, so, yeah. 40, 41. 41,000 in, in change. And yeah, I came back, Matt and I looked at each other on Sunday more on Sunday. No, no, sorry. On Monday morning. And he and I were both like, da, 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 like, dude, you gotta check this out. 2000 to 9,800 and like 75 or something like that. Just blew our minds. Yeah. It'll scale. Did. Like you could have still been collecting leads if you wanted to, but um, it'll scale to as much money as you want to throw at it. But yeah, it's it's called instantsocialproof.com if you want to check it out. It's a four day training. It's really really cool. Only about half hour a day. Don't think it's you know four days of like sitting in a conference or anything like that. Each day is only about thirty minutes long. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been interesting. We've had a lot of good success stories from it. Dude, I have my friend Gail. Gail, what up, player? Dude, she fucking hated me before she met me. <laughs> That's what she told me. She's like, I didn't want anything to do with you before I met you. And I'm like, well, nice to meet you too. <laughs> um, but she typed in here, yeah, Greg, I thought you were full of crap too until I met you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, she's an absolute sweetheart. And she she actually got me into um, 
what I love, uh, send out cards. I mean, yes, because this is a send out card that I was given by Bridget Jones, one of our listeners, put me on the cover, blew me away. Nice little message in here. But send out cards is an incredibly powerful tool. So, Nick, what is a prediction that you have for uh, social media? Which one do you do? You, you know, Facebook is the 800 pound gorilla in the room. I mean, it, it's not going yeah. anywhere. It has like 78 percent of all social media or something, some stupidly large percentage. Yep. Um, do you think Snap is going to be here in five, ten years? Because literally, Facebook and Insta just gobble up every idea they have. Yeah, it's that's all they have to do with Instagram, and they already have the platform. It, I I don't know because I never got into Snap, but I know that okay. So like my 13 year old, uh, they communicate like instead of using text messages, their friends they use Snapchat. That's just a, that's a thing, right? Um, because of that, it's a privacy thing. For whatever reason, they feel better that it disappears in 24 hours, whereas a text message will live on forever, unless you take a screenshot of it, obviously, right? Um, but for some reason, they feel it's less personal. And so there, there is a younger demographic of, of people that are using Snapchat for that specific reason. But then, like you said, every, anything that gets pushed out with Snapchat, Instagram is in the next day or the next week. And it's... Mm they they kill and so i have no i have no reason to go to snapchat and learn a whole new platform just cuz i knew what was going on in instagram um so maybe shame on me as a as an advertiser for not really you know digging my heels into it um but i don't know it's it's tough it's tough to say if it's not going to be around cuz they they do have a huge following still they do they're the number one shared video and photo platform per day they beat instead but they beat facebook i mean their yeah. their their active interface and user base is very loyal and very very much on top of it you know i only really use it you know a while back just flirt with two hot checks i mean seriously yeah. that was the only real reason i ever did it but then like when i start, started amassing more and more followers on it's not like i got a ton but i you know i got a mm, decent amount um, dude, my cousins ones, and other people yeah. got pissed that I wasn't, they weren't, I wasn't watching their snaps. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Want the damn thing. so I mean, if, if I, there's I one that. thing to kind of like really learn from all this and, and think about why snap is so popular, why Instagram is so popular is our attention span is getting like this. Yeah. We're right? goldfish. We're, we're, we're totally going, we're totally going down. And one thing that I wanted to mention, if you guys are noticing now, uh, Facebook released something called in stream ads. So just like YouTube, where you're now getting interrupted on YouTube to watch an ad or skip every five seconds or whatever, they're implementing that on Facebook now. Only now, on Facebook, your in-stream ad can only be 15 seconds long. Wow. So you have Instagram, the longest you can run an ad is a minute. In-stream ads on Facebook are 15 seconds. What is that telling you? What used to be, I guarantee you that next year, this time, or even summer, when we look at numbers of videos viewed and all that, everything that we look at now, it's like average time is 90 seconds. That's probably going to drop to a minute by next year. The ads that I'm running, I'm going to I'm gonna probably guess it'll be 45 seconds to a minute long at most. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to go 15 seconds to 30 seconds on any ad that I run right now because I know from the numbers that I've seen and the ads that I run, 30 seconds to 45 seconds is like that magic number now. It really is. I mean, I want, I, I mean, the old before, you know, live video, <clears throat> the old saying was when it, when it came to video, be as long as you have to, but as short as you can be. Sure. And, at, you know, never go over the two minute mark. Well, dude, it's funny. Like if I'm watching a video on something, if I, right when I start getting annoyed, I look down and it's always almost exactly at two minutes. And with the ads, like if it's, if it's over 30 seconds, I mean, I'm frustrated and, you know, yeah. you know, just moving on and just irritated. They took 30 seconds of my day. So I completely agree with you, but you also have to be very, you have to be very aware of that. You are, have to capture your audience. They, you capture their interest. You can't Difficult. just be just fucking cardboard on a rainy day. Boring. Yeah. I mean, you, you gotta be animated. You gotta be bigger than yourself. I mean, look at your favorite actor or actress guys, that person probably a 95% bet they are not bouncing off the walls like rubber balls, you know, when they're not on camera. Yeah. I mean, they have to be bigger than that to capture the attention. So, I mean, that's what, I mean, when Matt and I do live video, when you do a live video, when we put energy into this, like it's, yeah. when I'm not on camera, I'm not bouncing around like an idiot. <laughs> I'm, I'm more sitting there like, I need to recover from this shit. Holy yeah. crap. Well, that's what happens as soon as the off button goes and you're like, Oh, Okay. <laughs> it's so true. As soon as we get done with our show, we all we both slump in our chairs like, oh, good show, dude. Good show. All right. <laughs> but I think I think for the most part, if you if you figure out what your behavior is, 
like look at what you you do yourself like you said as soon as you look down it's two minutes i'm trying to make a conscious effort when i'm making videos now and actually doing things of it absolutely keeping it under a minute and if i can help it go try to get a message out in 15 seconds it's fucking hard i just did some 15 second ads this so week and it, it was hard to do in 15 to, to capture attention and convey a message in 15 seconds with branding and all it's a, it's a hard thing to do but if you can do it I think I have a pretty good formula. I haven't shared it yet. I'm testing it. But if you can do it, it the rewards are big because everybody's going to watch 15 seconds. Yeah. You, you're going to have 15, 15 seconds. seconds. I mean, that's even on, um, you know, when it comes to doing, you know, Facebook messengers or SMS video, you know, when you do the video clips from your mobile, that's 15 seconds. You can do, face, you know, messenger.com, you know, it'll tie into your Facebook messenger account. And you can do up to a minute on your desktop videos on your, on your message, video messages. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that 15 seconds, man, you got to, you know, get get in, get your message, get out. Yeah. I mean, clear and concise. And it's, it, practice with your mom or your best friend or something like that and see how tongue-tied you get the first couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're like a puppy tripping over your ears. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's two sentences. It's literally yeah. two sentences. Like, yeah, it's, I, I, it's tough. So one more one more thing before we bounce. I know we got it. We're, we're running up on the clock here as far as mm -hmm. tools. Um, I ran across an app that I introduced to my group called InShot, and it's yeah. I N S H O T InShot. It's available for Apple and iTunes. If you guys have noticed recently, inside Facebook and inside of Instagram, you're seeing a lot of ads with banners at the top and banners at the bottom, and they'll have writing on it, they'll have emojis, they'll have whatever. But what what ends up happening is when you publish an ad or a video in four by three format, which is a square format it takes up like 65 or 70% more real estate on your phone. So as far as grabbing people's attention, when you publish a square video, it, it grabs people's attention much better. And it was kind of difficult to do that. You'd have to have like a Adobe Premiere, like what I use to do that. Um, but this InShot app, you can literally record a widescreen video on your phone. It'll automatically upload into InShot. It'll put the top banner on, the bottom banner on. You can put your logo, you can put whatever you want in there and have that square format, upload it straight to Instagram or Facebook, and you are now marketing in 2017 like everybody else, but with half the effort. I, I played around with it, guys. It's a pretty freaking cool tool to use, but like everything else, you just gotta find the time to, to actually use it. I mean, on this show, how many tidbits have we given out? I mean, yeah. five, 10, I mean, a ton of different opportunities, guys. Don't try to do everything. Pick a couple of your top. Nick, you're going to give advice to the top three that someone would put into use starting today to be ready for 2018 so they can dip their toe in the pool through December when nobody's really fucking paying attention to your ass anyways. So you cannot be a complete mental midget when it hits January and everybody's rubbing their eyes and getting, you know, drinking their ad, taking their ad bill, getting over their hangovers and getting ready to get back <laughs> into the real life. What would you do in order to, to start to crush it in 2018? So number three. Uh, would be pay attention to Instagram. So if you're if you're number three and you don't have a lot of money and you don't want to have a lot of video production and you only want to use your cell phone, go to Instagram, watch what other people are doing, shoot some quick videos. And my number one video tip for anybody, for always, if you're if you if you're new to video, is record yourself doing video every single day, and you'll notice after about two weeks you'll be very comfortable. So if you're not comfortable going live now, that's fine record yourself, but you don't have to publish it just because you record mm -hmm. something doesn't mean you have to publish it into the world. So just get used to hitting that record button and your heart fluttering for just a few seconds before you speak. <laughs> and then you're so nervous to speak. You don't say anything good, right? Do you have to just do that? You have to do that for two weeks in a row. So, so practice your video. Okay. Um, number two would be probably if it's tough because if you're an advertiser, um, looking at what Facebook has to offer as far as ads. So the videos that you do record, make sure that they're under 30 seconds or say a minute to 30 seconds. Um, and then we'll pay attention to Facebook lead ads, which we didn't really get into. Um, but trying to keep people on Facebook with entertaining topics and subjects. So number two would be don't just post something on Facebook that's going to take people off of Facebook. Okay. Facebook wants to keep people on Facebook. So if you can have something like an embedded video to put on there, 
uh, your own video, your own content, an article, even long form on Facebook works pretty well instead of actually throwing that article out there for someone to bounce off. That'd be number two. Um, and then number one, uh, join my Facebook group, Real Estate Marketing Rockstars, and get ongoing advice on social media on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is, that is some good stuff right there. As you were talking, we, when it comes to content, you guys, if you want to be relevant uh, to, to, to consumers, uh, realtytimes.com is an information aggregator. Go to consumer advice. I'm putting the link into uh, the Facebook right now. Guys, go get articles. There are things in here that you can go talk about. I mean, in the consumer advice, there's buyer, seller, mortgage, uh, homeowner, new home, and rental. Six topics, guys. You can go do a video three days a week, one day a week, six days a week, you know, really whatever you want. It can be something new about real estate so that you can be relevant to the homeowners and buyers that are going to be starting to pay attention to you so you can start creating the content. Um, and I think that's very important. Nick. I love the, I love your, um, your, your advice there guys for video again. Here's a $12 little light. I'll put the link in it for Amazon. Here's a lavalier microphone. This is not the one I use. This is given to me. But this right here, your setup right here, guys, will give you great audio, great light, and you'll be into it for less than probably 100 bucks with a, a Rode Smart Lav and then with this mobile light. If you have good light and good audio, people will pay attention to you longer. If you have bad light, bad audio, or, or bad light and bad, bad audio combined, people are not going to stay on your videos. Yeah. And that Realty Times is, is a great resource. Like it, that's the number one question we get. It's like, what content do I post? There's right. so many blog articles, so many things. Literally record yourself reading an article to start off with. Like just record something, but don't just post it as a blog post. No. Have it come from your mouth. Have it come from your face, your expressions, your, you know, I'm an expert in this category and this is what I found today. Exactly. And guys, you can give credit. Hey man, this is this yeah. article is by Nick Sackis, founder on Realty Times. It's all about blah blah blah, yakety schmack. I read it. Here's what I think. Go over the bullet points. Call it a day. Super 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 simple. Um, any last points before we get out of here, my friend? I uh, I I love so the people that are on this show that are listening to this show are forward thinkers, are people looking to see what's going on in the marketplace. So everybody watching the show, everybody in my group, like Greg says, you know we're just thankful that people follow us and listen to our, our crap. Right. But it, it is something, it's a lot of responsibility to have a group of people that follow you. And I, yeah. I appreciate that. And, and from the bottom of my heart, for, for sure, for everybody that follows me, uh, I can't thank you guys enough to, to allow me to put on a Santa hat and talk for an hour uh, <laughs> on video about stuff that is passionate to me, which is, which is marketing, but just keep your eyes open guys, right? Look at what's going on outside of the real estate market. Look at what Amazon's doing. Look at what Google's doing. Look at what Facebook's doing as a business and just connect the dots and see there's a lot of stuff happening um, in the technology world that just we need to be aware of as small business owners to keep up. Um, I'll do my best to keep everybody up to date in my group that's following me. And I know Greg and Matt do a tremendous job of, of their following in their group. But just keep your eyes open because there's a lot of stuff changing every day. Yeah, guys, do not be an ostrich. Do not kick, keep your head in the sand. Do not be like, oh, you know, real estate's going to be the way it's always been, the way my dad used to do it. I'm sorry, you will be a dinosaur. You will start dying. Video, video is the way of the future. Nick, contact for you so they can reach out for referrals for you for real estate. And you know, give them your group one more time. I did put the group in the chat, but tell them what it is one more time. Yeah, realestatemarketingrockstars.com will take you directly to the group. Um, if you guys want to throw some referrals to me in Tampa, Florida, uh, Keller Williams, you can send me an email at info at sakisgroup.com, S-A-K-K-I-S-G-R-O-U-P.com, info at sakisgroup.com. I will take care of your people. Take care of the peeps. Okay, very cool. Guys, uh, for me, I'm putting in the information here. Um, you guys can go. If you are interested in looking for coaching in 2017, I am taking on and doing a couple of coaching clients. I'll probably do max 15 to 20, max. So if you guys are looking to do it, it is $9.96 a month. Okay, that is the that is the cost of doing the coaching with me. Uh, it's four calls a month uh, for an hour each. So you do get a quite a bit of time one on one with me. Uh, go to Book McDaniel. I did put the link in there. Book a 30 minute, 30 minute time slot. It's a first date, people. It is a first date. We want to see if we want to go on a second date. The second date is going to be a 60 minute call. All right, we're having dinner on the second date. This is drinks on the first one. <laughs> um, but if uh, if if we both feel that's going to be a good fit, 
uh, then we can proceed and, and talk about next moves and how we're going to do it. Uh, but as always, guys, please go. Well, I'm here in the San Francisco Bay Area. You can always find me on Greg McDaniel on Facebook. Send me a PM. Give me a referral. Love to work with any of your peeps here in the Bay Area. Uh, support the show, guys. You know, John, Matt is doing coaching as well. Go to bookjohnson.com. Uh, Not book a big Johnson, you dirty bird. Book Johnson. <laughs> And oh. that's porn. That's Pornhub. That's a, that's it a is Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> um, go to bookjohnson.com, guys. He's one of the best I've ever seen with systems, schedules, mindset. I mean, if you need to jumpstart your business and really understand what what systems to put into place to put another 10, 15, 20 deals into your into your business in the next 12 uh, to 24 months. Take a look at him, guys. He's fantastic. Book 30 minutes with him as well. Support the show. Tell your friends, family, brokerage, you know, screaming from the rooftops, take care of your pigeons and spread the word about the show out to all of your peoples and wherever you guys are from. Um, we do the show because we absolutely love you and adore you. We want to see you guys grow and become the agents that you truly want to be by the information and the guests like Nick that we bring to you on a three times on a weekly basis. If you guys want to see how to do live prospecting calls, come back at 430 Monday through Thursday on my Facebook page. You can watch me get my ass beat by other by the people <laughs> that i'm doing outbound calls to. it's very entertaining <laughs> it really is it really is yeah, when i get a really nice is. big go fuck yourself i mean i will laugh my ass off on that <laughs> it's not that bad guys okay yeah. nick you know Bye, what buddy. we're gonna do we're out of here all right guys we're out of here peace out ninjas peace. we gone